form, maybe 30 to 40 words at least for, for each question. So here comes 20 marks, 10 into 2, 20. 20 is gone. Here, section B is 60 marks. Each question is of 12 marks. How, again, this 12 is divided into three parts. It is 4 plus 4 plus 6, 12, into 5, that comes 60 marks. Here you find options. Out of 8, you have to answer any 5. And in this case, the question comes from one single concept. All the three will be from one single concept. So if you prepare one concept thoroughly, you can answer one question. Instead of preparing 10 concepts, it's better you focus on one, but do it thoroughly, so that you get all the 12 marks here. So eight questions are there, out of which you have to answer five. So it's 60 marks. The question arises, 60 plus 20 is 80. Then where is the other 20 marks? It's a three hour exam. The other 20 marks is project work. So here we come, paper two, 20 marks. In paper two, 20 marks, topic will be given by your concerned teacher. And you have to prepare the project and by September, you have to submit the project. So project mark one, is here, the marks is not mentioned, I'm mentioning the marks here, 10 marks, and project two is 10 marks. Two projects, two different files. Now, the subject, concerned subject teacher will give you the topic, but who will examine the project? An external will come, locally appointed, but approved by the council, will come, and he will be taking the viva voice. And how much you have learned from doing the project, that will be evaluated and marks will be awarding accordingly. So you see that, you know every page of the project well. You have written, you have made the project. Okay, so that will be evaluated jointly by your concerned subject teacher and the external examiner. And the marks will be sent directly to the council. So this is the pattern. So how we have to prepare, how much you have to write, and all the questions will be conceptual. You need to know the topic well, then only you will be able to answer the question. Now I'm coming to today's topic. Before I introduce today's topic, I want you to learn the meaning of certain words, the clear, clear concept without of which you cannot understand the chapter. The first word we will be writing on the blackboard, utility. Now what is utility? Is it usefulness? Does utility mean usefulness? Want satisfying ability of a commodity is called utility. Want satisfying ability of a commodity is called utility. We all pay for satisfaction. We live for satisfaction, in fact. What we seek from morning to evening, a satisfaction. And some of the satisfaction can be acquired by payment of money. Money helps us. You can't buy mother's love with money, but you can buy a mango with money. Okay, so, so, so commodity helps us to satisfy our needs, our wants. The ability of a commodity to satisfy us is called utility. It is an abstract thing and it is imaginary. Okay, now if I ask you how much satisfaction you receive by 
eating a samosa. Will you be able to tell or compare the satisfaction of you derive from eating a samosa and a rasogolla? Can you compare? And why you pay more for the rasogolla? Obviously, it gives you more satisfaction. Got my concept? So, want satisfying ability of a commodity is called utility. Now, the question arises, water is very useful to you. But you don't pay for it. Okay? It gives you satisfaction. Then what is demand? You don't say you got demand for water. Demand for a mango. Now, so let me come to the word demand. We talk of demand for medicines, demand for so many things, but never talk of demand for oxygen. So to have a demand, the commodity must have certain attributes. What are those attributes? The first attribute should be scarce. It should be scarce. If it is abundant, you don't have to pay for it. For example, oxygen. Have you ever seen people say, I pay daily this much for the oxygen? 